morning. It is Trinity Sunday today, and we welcome you to our church. You are here in spirit, and we worship God in spirit and in truth because God is spirit. Our mission is always to feed the hungry in body, mind, and spirit. So no matter who you are and where you are in your life journey, you are welcome at First Congregational Church. Our statement of oneness, we are made in the image of God, thus as we grow in faith and mature in spirit, that image shall shine all the more clearly. Like Jesus, we are children of God, thus as our birthright, we shall live all our days surrounded by unconditional love. Humanity, the image of God, is beautiful in God's sight, part of a magnificent creation. Therefore, we are beautiful in God's sight. The scripture declares that the entire kingdom of God is within us. Also, we live our lives immersed in divinity. We gather to celebrate that sacred and wondrous truth. Many hurtful and unjust things happen in our world, motivated by hatred or fear. Yet also there is love in our hearts. Let us declare that love, acknowledge it is of God, and promise to grow in love day by day. Our call to worship is from Psalm 8. God, brilliant Lord, yours is a household name. I look at your macro skies, moon and stars mounted in their settings. Then I look at my micro self and wonder, why do you bother with us? Why take a second look our way? You put us in charge of your handcrafted world, make us lord of sheep and cattle, even animals out in the wild. Birds flying and fish swimming, whales singing in the ocean deep. Oh God, brilliant Lord, your name echoes around the world. Opening hymn 28, Holy God, we praise your name. prayer. Dear God, thank you for revealing yourself to us in so many ways. You are our creator God as well as the God who became flesh and dwell among us as Jesus who gave his life for our salvation. You are also the counselor, the comforter, the guide, 
and the Holy Spirit who empowers us to do your will and glorify your name. With grateful hearts, our triune God, we give thanks and praise. Amen. The scripture is Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Meanwhile, the 11 disciples were on their way to Galilee, headed for the mountain Jesus had set for their reunion. The moment they saw Jesus, they worshipped him. Some, though, held back, not sure about worship, about risking themselves totally. Jesus, undeterred, went straight ahead and gave his charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you. Go out and train everyone you meet, far and near, in this way of life, marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. I'll be with you as you do this day, day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. Second reading is Luke 12, 13 to 21. Someone in the crowd asked, uh, said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But Jesus said to him, Friend, who sent me to be a judge or an arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possession. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what shall I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I'll do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to my soul, So you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. Today's sermon is, Are You Rich Towards God? You know, because of the pandemic, we find that many, many people have suffered a great deal, especially businesses. At one time, they were so rich, and now, all of a sudden, companies are declaring what? Bankruptcy. And here, the scripture is asking us, do not lay your treasures on earth. This pandemic has taught us that treasures on earth are only what? Temporary. You have it, and then you don't have it. Whereas, if you have laid out a lot of treasures, like this rich fool for yourself, but you are not rich towards God. The scripture says, lay up treasures in heaven. Are you rich towards God? In all the 40 years that I served 
I have met quite a few rich people in my congregation. And there's one particular rich man, very kind, generous to the church. And he said to me, he said, Pastor, I am jealous of you. I said, you are rich and I am just normal, regular pastor. Why are you jealous of me? Most people who look at you and see your mansion and all the wealth you have, they will be jealous of you. He found out that as a pastor, I could take four weeks vacation a year and then two weeks continuing education. So I actually had six weeks off every year. And he said to me, he said, you know, I couldn't even take two days off. I said, what? You are a rich man, you couldn't? I said, why? He says, with all these businesses, you know, phone calls, I had to keep going. And I was like, wow, what good it is to be a rich man who can't even take two days off. I said, I'd rather be an ordinary person and can take six weeks off every year. It's important to take days off. But I have another friend who is a restaurant owner, and he's starting his second restaurant and planning for the third one. I say, friend, why are you doing a second restaurant? Your first restaurant is doing so well. He say, oh, pastor, you don't know. There's this one word called what? Greed. When you have one restaurant, you want to have two. When you have two restaurants, guess what? You want to have three. And I said, you just don't know the other word. You only know more. Yeah, he said, that's right. If I have one, I, ha I want more. And I want more. I said, you should learn the other word, which is what? Enough. Otherwise, more will keep on demanding your life. I have another rich man in my congregation who say, Pastor, I don't know the Bible very well, but there's one verse that bothers me. I say, what is it? He says, what does it profit a person if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? What can you give in exchange for your own soul? Wow, he was really touched by that. And uh, he said, yeah, I've been thinking about it. I got to learn how to put some treasures in heaven, how to be rich towards God. This pandemic taught us that we are all in this together. We need to help each other. No person is an island. And each person's joy is our joy. Each person's grief is our grief. So we need to reach out and do something gracious and kind and helpful in the name of God. That's your treasures in heaven. It is not easy to make the choice. I want to close with uh, one more song. And the song is uh, a very famous song. You may have heard of this song. Some of you know George Beverly Shea. He was 23 years old, and his family was in financial trouble. God blessed him with the ability to sing, and uh, he wanted to decide how to sing, and he was uh, given an audition to go to New York City, where you can make more money, substantial salary, to stay home and sing in church, or to go to New York City. His mother found a poem, and the poem is written by Mrs. Rhea F. Miller, and it's entitled, i rather have Jesus than silver or gold. i rather be his than have riches untold. i rather have Jesus than houses or land. i rather be led by his nail-pierced hand. So George sat down that morning and took this poem 
and wrote this hymn. And you know the rest of the story. He and Cliff Barrows, they sang for the Billy Graham crusade all their life. And this was his favorite song. i rather have Jesus than silver or gold. i rather be his than have riches untold. i rather have Jesus than silver or gold. i rather be his than have riches untold. i rather have Jesus of land I rather be led by his nail pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be in sin dress Jesus, that anything this world affords to So George made the decision, and he put treasures in heaven, and he was such a Blessing to all the people who heard him sing, and this was his favorite song. So he could be learning how to be rich towards God. Let us continue to pray for the prayer concern and send your prayer concern to the church if you have new ones, and also continue to send your offering to support the ministry of this church. Our final hymn, number 10, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in peace and the God of peace go with you. Amen.